Okay, in today's tutorial, we are going to learn how to do grunge style portraits. And there's a lot of really cool effects you can do if you add an overlay of a gradient and you add some textures in. This is um, one of the potential results that you could get. Um, I got this picture by adding a texture layer that looks like burlap and a gradient overlay. And I added some spatters around the head and um, made this a solid stencil. So this is the picture that I'm starting with. The first thing I'm going to do is free up the background layer by double clicking next to the lock and clicking OK. Then I'm going to use the lasso tool. I'll make a loose selection and draw. Click and drag and just draw a loose selection around the picture and go back to the beginning and let go. And then I have a selection line around the picture. Then I'm going to go down to the bottom of my layers menu and add a layer mask. So I have the mask selected and I also have the picture, so, um, the picture selected. So here's the mask selected and you can tell because it has the white corners around it. And I click on the thumbnail and I have the picture selected. So what I'm going to do next is I want to make a threshold version of the mask. So I am going to do this two ways so you know the, the benefits of it. I select the picture layer and then I'm going to go to image adjustments and threshold. This will give me the menu bar where I can just choose. If I have one in here that I really like, then I can just click OK and I have my threshold picture. If I want to be able to dodge and burn and adjust some of the areas so that they have different amounts of threshold in within the sampled image, I can undo this, Control alt z and I can make sure that the image layer is selected, go down to my adjustment layers, and make a threshold adjustment layer. Then I can slide this picture the way I would like, get something that's mostly accurate, mostly the way I want it with the right amount of contrast, and then I can click on my picture layer, not my mask thumbnail, but my picture thumbnail, and I can dodge and burn. The dodge and burn tools are located on the tools panel. I can dodge to lighten, and I can burn to darken, similar to how you would in darkroom photography. So I can dodge in some of my hair, make my hair show up a little bit better, and some contrast. I can make some areas down here on my hair highlights show up a little bit better then I can burn in areas that I would like to be darker make my eyebrows show up a little bit more all right so once you have something that you're fairly satisfied with you're going to go ahead and make the next step so in my next step, I am going to go ahead and um, choose what I would like for the edges of this picture to look like. So I may want to merge down this layer first. Since I've done an adjustment layer to merge down, I can right click and I can merge down or I can hit Control E. Control E is the shortcut. And this now my becomes my picture layer. So I can click on the mask, and if I don't like some of these areas, I can erase them. As long as I have a solid black and a solid white um, layer mask, I can erase the pixels around. Black eliminates, and white restores. So if I click over here and erase white, white will restore because I'm erasing and white is my background color. So black will eliminate. Right now I have a spatter brush so I'm going to change it back to a regular brush. Hard edged brush and use the brackets to make my brush size smaller. Left bracket makes my brush size smaller. I'm just going to eliminate some of the edges around here. I'm going to show you how to adjust the edges to make them look kind of how you would like. I'm going to leave some of this texture behind my head. I'm just going to go like that. Get a loose selection right there. Okay, so now that I have my mask selection edges um, pretty good, you want to leave some grungy edges to this so that we can play with the texture value. 
you're going to use the um, the next step you're going to click on the black parts of the picture and isolate just the black parts of the picture so I'm going to click on my image layer and then I am going to go to select color range and I'm going to isolate just the black parts. So I'm going to take my eyedropper on my cursor. When I drag over the picture, I want sampled colors. I want my fuzziness to be set to 200 all the way up. And I want my image selected. And I want to take the eyedropper and click on the black areas of the picture and click OK. Now I will notice that I have a selection line marching ants all around the black areas of my picture because that's all I'm going to keep is just the black areas of the picture. So this next step involves paths. For paths, what you're going to do is you're going to, for paths, um, I'm going to select that again. Okay, for paths, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the layers bar and then channels and then paths, this tab over that says paths. So click on that and then on the menu bar for paths, we can make a work path. And the tolerance we're going to set to one pixel. The work path is made based off of the selection that we have with black pixels. I'm going to leave this selected. I know it's selected because it has the, the gray bar on it. I'm going to go back to my layers panel. I'm going to make a new layer by clicking on the new layer icon. I'm going to call this black. Because in this layer, we are going to fill the path with only the black part of the image. So I'm going to go to my foreground color, make sure my foreground color is black. If it's not, you can reset and then switch it with the arrows so that it's black. I'm going to click on the pen tool. I'm going to right click over my image and fill path. I'm going to fill path with my foreground color, which I've set to black. Now you'll notice that this has shown up in your black layer. If I turn off the visibility for my original image, all that's left is the black parts of my image, and that's what I want. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to add some fun effects so that I have really cool edges around my picture. And we're going to make some layers so that we can have a, a white background, and then we can also have a layer where we can paint really cool splatter brushes all around the image. So I'm going to make two new layers. The first new layer I'm going to make, get rid of this properties bar by clicking here. First new layer I'm going to make, I'm going to call splatters because this is where I'm going to paint into my image and add some really cool background objects. And then I'm going to make a new layer underneath the black layer and I'm going to call that white. This is where I'm going to put my white background. So first let's fill this layer white. I'm going to take my paint bucket, I'm going to switch my colors so that white is my foreground color, and I'm going to fill this in white. So this is what I have so far. I have a white background, I have my, my bottom layer is invisible, I have a black layer that I filled in, and I have a layer with nothing in it yet called splatters. We are going to go and load some new brushes in that I've placed in the demos folder for you. So to get new brushes, you're going to click on the paintbrush. We're going to put them in the splatters layer. So click on the paintbrush. Open up the drop down for the paintbrush. And then open up this custom wheel. And go down to load brushes. We're going to find the brushes in the demos folder under grunge. And it is the file that is called wg underscore splatter underscore one dot abr. ABR files are brush files that we can load in and keep in Photoshop to add in new brushes. So it's a brushes file. I'm going to load. And then I will notice that my brushes have shown up towards the bottom. There's a lot of brushes in here that you can play with. They have really great effects. Um, you can change the size of them so that they're bigger and smaller. And if you vary the size, you can get a lot of really neat stuff. I kind of like this one. so. I want my brush to be black though, so I'm going to change my foreground color to black. I'm going to paint that brush. I can use the brackets to make the brush bigger. Paint it in. I'm going to change to a different brush. Try this one. Put this one over here. Looks 
pretty cool. Let's try um, one over here a little bit smaller. One over there. And then vary it up a little bit. Let's try this one over here. Put some down at the bottom. Now, this little white line that's showing up around my shoulder is my work path. So what I'm going to do is, I don't want that, so I'm going to go over to paths and I'm just going to delete the path because I'm done using the path. I only used it so that I could fill in the black layers on the black and I already have it. So I don't want the work path edges to show up anymore, so I'm going to delete the path. And now those edges don't show up. If I go back to my layers, this is what I have for my splatters. I've drawn in a, a bunch of stuff. Um, you can edit this how you like. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the texture on top of it and the gradient. So I am going to choose one of the textures. I have opened these up. They are in the grunge folder. Let's try this uh, burlap canvas one. or uh, The burlap canvas one is the one that I used before. So actually let's try carton paper. So here's carton paper. I've already opened it up. I went to file open. In the grunge folder there are several textures that you can choose from. So if you go to the Fine Arts Server folder, you're going to choose, in the grunge, there's burlap canvas, there's carton paper, there's one called rusty, and one called stratch scratches. So you have four different files to choose from. I'm going to try the carton paper one. First you have to free up the background, clicking next to this lock. Double click, click OK. Then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to use the Move tool, and I'm going to drag it over into my new document which is right here so I drag it and drop it in my new document it's too small so as long as the resolution is okay on the photo we can blow it up and in this one I think it's fine so I'm gonna hit control T to transform the size control T I'm just gonna resize the edges so that it covers all of the area that I want it to cover and then hit enter to apply my transformation so here's my texture layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a layer mask on my texture layer so that it only applies to the black areas and the splatter areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this texture layer and call it texture. Highlight my texture layer, but I'm going to control, hold down control and click on the splatters layer and the pixels will be selected from that splatters layer. Then I'm going to hold down shift and control and also add in the layers from the black layer. I still have my texture layer highlighted so I'm going to add a layer mask and this texture will show up. Now if you liked it black before, which I kind of did, I'm going to change the opacity of my texture layer so that it's not as bold. You can't see it quite as much. So Let's put a little bit of it in there but not tons. Now I'm going to add a gradient overlay. So all you do to add some colors, just some a hint of color gradient in this, I'm going to go to my adjustment layers and I'm going to add a gradient. You want the one that says gradient dot dot dot. So I'm going to apply my gradient to this and go through and choose some gradients that you like. If you don't like any of these gradients, you can go to um, try some of these other ones like metals and hit append and add some in. Now this is an overlay, so right now it's going over my entire picture. I'm going to click OK. So there's my overlay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my opacity of my overlay goes down. And then I can see it only over the areas of the picture that I want it to be. So you can adjust the opacity. You can get a lot of different effects with this. But I have it just subtly going over my picture. So this is one result that I did. Um, there's some other, this is one of the textures that you could use. This is one of the textures that you could use. You could try this one, you can try this one. You can do a couple of different textures. Here's one that I did with the burlap and then a metal gradient. So have some fun with this and make sure your layers are set up with a white background layer, then the black, then the splatters, then the texture, then the gradient overlay adjustment. And good luck.